Uh, I get it. And and I, if I'm, you know, any Kings fan out there listening to this show, I'd be excited about Keegan Murray. I would. Um, but th- I, I saw another quote to uh, Steve Bullpet of Heavy.com, and it was from an NBA executive. And I started to wonder if, just if, Keegan is starting to be, you know, starting to be set up for disappointment. And I'll explain in a minute, but here, here's the quote from the exec. Murray was probably the second best, talking about the rookies at Summer League. Mm-hmm. He said, this executive said Bancaro was, was the best. I don't think people knew how well he could shoot the ball. He's a tremendous shooter. That still has to translate to the real games, but I think he opened some people's eyes. The Kings do re- uh, the, the Kings could be really interesting if Mike, as in Brown, can get those guys to realize what they can do. It's been a long time since Sacramento was any good, and these guys obviously weren't there for all of it, but sometimes it could be hard for a team to take that first big step. And so when you, you look at that quote, you know, tremendous shooter, okay, fine. But then, you know, to go off of, to go off of Keegan Murray is is better than I thought, and this team might be better than I thought. I just felt reading that quote, it, it was putting some pressure on Keegan saying, well, th- they have a legitimate piece now, and this guy this guy might be able to help, you know, spearhead this basketball team. And and I just wonder, I do wonder if we're, we're almost setting up Keegan for unreasonable expectations. Do you think, do you think, are you worried that this is going to hinder Keegan Murray? Like no. Like he's going to start no. to see this and hear no. this and feel the weight of it? No. Okay. Not at all. All right. I just wonder if fans. If fans are being set up for And even some of the media. Yeah. Uh, are, are we setting the expectations for Keegan off of Summer League to be unreasonably high? That might be the case. That might that might be the case. I don't think that's the case with what I mentioned in terms of it hindering Keegan Murray in some way, shape, or form. Because, like I said about Trey Lance in the first hour of the show, I think greats welcome pressure. I think greats thrive on pressure, want the spotlight, and want 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 the competition, right? And want to show you that throw anything at me, and I'll and I'll and I'll do whatever I do with it. I don't think that's a problem with Keegan Murray. I think he's got the demeanor. I think he's cut from the right cloth. As far as fans and the media, Nick, yeah, may maybe we we all might be getting set up for for some disappointment here because. And I I said I don't know if I brought this up to you or JJ in a conversation off the air. I don't remember, but. It sure does seem to me. Now, I'm I'm I just came from Milwaukee a month ago where we didn't really give a damn about the summer league because, right. because there were bigger, better things that that the Bucks and Bucks fans were were reaching for. You yes. know what I mean? So I, I checked in with I don't again, I don't remember if it was you or JJ, and I said, Man, this is a lot of hype for a guy in the summer league. And I don't remember either locally or nationally. A fan base getting as carried away with a summer league performance as what I'm seeing with Keegan Murray. When the summer league was going on, Keegan Murray was the talk of the league, Nick. On and not just here, not just here in Sacramento, not on Cattles and Rami and SacktownSports.com. You turn on ESPN and their their NBA shows, their their morning shows with first tape. If they were talking summer league, the name Keegan Murray was coming up, and I was like, man, that is an awfully bright spotlight. And whether it was you or JJ, you're both like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't remember this. Davion Mitchell was the MVP of the summer league. We, we didn't, people didn't react this way either here in Sacramento or nationally. There is something about his performance for some reason that has drawn a reaction that is not normal for a player in the summer league. Do you think that's more of the media and ESPN pushing the summer league as a thing now? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting question. Because now, I mean, they're giving away rings to the winners. They are. Like, <laughs> everything Outrageous, is by the way. branded. I mean, it could be. You know, when when you have when you have the you know power of ESPN and and look, ESPN wants to push the summer league, and the NBA wants ESPN to push the summer league, and so there are always motives as to why ESPN is talking about what they're talking about. But l- let's l- let me give you a hypothetical. My expectations for Keegan Murray, if I were to kind of just throw out points and rebounds, if I said Keegan Murray gives you 14 and 6 this year, Mm. do you think the majority of Kings fans would be disappointed in that? I think I'm disappointed in that. 
Really? 14 yeah, and 6. I, I think so. Verlad, do you think Kings fans Am would I be I setting the bar too high? Would be disappointed if if Keegan Murray finished this year averaging 14 and 6? Hmm. I guess it dep- depends on what that 14 and 6 is. What it looks like? Yeah, like are they winning? And like Fox that's, and that's Domas are just going off. Then that's I think point. they're happy. If they're fourteen and six losing, people are going to be like, "This guy was the fourth pick in the draft." Fourteen yeah. and six. See, here's why I say fourteen and six, and here's why I wonder if people might have some unreasonable expectations. He's not your number one option. I don't even think he's your number two option. So when you talk about players, right? Like Bancaro is going to touch the basketball, Rami, a ton. Like Orlando's going to give that dude the ball all the time. True. And he's going to he's not only going to play off of other people at times, but he's going to be asked to create a lot of offense on his own. That is not the role that Keegan's going to play here. At least not in year 1. He's going to be playing off of Fox and off of Sabonis. So if you have a third option for lot, I'll ask you you know, somewhat the same question but a little bit of a tweak. 14 and 6, but Keegan's your third option. I'm happy with that. Rami? Yeah, I'm probably happy with that. Again, if they're winning, yeah, you can't. I don't think you you can really complain at that. I mean, I I should have done this uh, before the show. I I didn't look at, like, other teams that kind of, you know, contend in in what their third, you know, top score scores. But I think, like, that's why, for me, expectation. I'd be fine with Keegan going 14, 15, and 6 as the third option in his rookie season. Because if he's playing the right way and he's playing off of Fox and Domas, then I say to myself, well, his usage is not as high as these other players. He's not going to get as much I don't opportunity. Think any, I don't think everybody's going to be as – and you'll have to, I think you'll have to bring me down to earth, Nick, if, if what we're talking about here happens where he has 14 and 6, but this team isn't winning and people are pointing a finger at the Kings and the Keegan Murray pick or even at Keegan Murray himself and going, this guy was supposed to be the savior – and the fourth pick in the draft, I don't think everybody's going to look at it in as nuanced a way, including myself, in as nuanced a way <laughs> as you're looking at it right now. I think people are going to be are going to be up in arms if this guy is 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 not in some way, shape, or form playing a pretty major role for a winning basketball team. I think a lot of it does. That's a great point by Verlot. I think a lot of this does hinge, fair or not, to Keegan Murray on what this season looks like for the Kings as a whole, and that's the lens that we're going to see Keegan Murray Keegan Murray season through. And to marry Verlad's point, and when I'm talking about numbers and usage and all of that, people look at Drew Holiday as the final piece, right? He was the final piece for the Bucks. As soon as they acquired him, he made a big difference, and he turned them into a championship team. He was that last piece of the puzzle. You had Giannis, you had Middleton, you had other guys, but you really needed Holiday to complete that mm-hmm. puzzle. And Holiday, you know, 18 points. 18 points a game, 7 assists as the third guy really on that on that basketball team. And so also a defensive dog though. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that brings me to another point about Keegan, like if he gives you 15 and 6 or 14 and 6, I mean it's a point per game. Say 15 and 6 cuz it, you know, it sounds better. So he gives you 15 and 6 and above average defense in his rookie season. And he gives you above average shooting. I think you, you you feel really good about that. And and I just wonder with with all of the talk during the summer league and, and all of the talk surrounding the draft. You know, if you sit there and you say fifteen and six, I do feel like at least some Kings fans will be like, "That's it." But if you think about if it's it, it's fifteen and six in a team that's not even sniffing the playoffs. That that will be the reaction of Kings fans. If it's fifteen and six. And Fox and and Domas are going off, and this is a team that's you know in the six seven seed range and looking like they have a playoff spot locked up. Nobody will be nobody will be complaining about Keegan Murray. Dean, no one. Dean says on the YouTube chat, if you're going to say fourteen and six, that's less than what Harrison averaged the last two seasons. But remember, this team is more talented. Yes. So you know Harrison Barnes wasn't fighting for shots with Kevin Herter with Domas. You know, with Malik Monk when he's in the game, with a top five pick in Keegan Murray, Keegan Keegan has to fight for his for his land, so to speak, right? When he's out there on the court, mm-hmm. and he's going to be, I think, the third option. But it's going to really depend on Fox and Domas because I think a lot of people uh, look at this the same way. 
you're running your offense through those two guys. And so, look, Ke- Keegan can explode for 30 one night because he's getting wide open shots, the offense is running well, and he's a really good shooter, and all of a sudden you look up, he's got 30. I just I don't know if he's going to have that kind of opportunity to be a consistent 19, 20 point score. And I think the way people have talked about him, especially off of the summer league, some people might be saying to themselves, 20 a game. And I think Keegan, if he if he was in Orlando, I think Keegan could get you 18 to 20 a game. But here on this team, I think you're probably looking at closer to 15 than 20. You agree with me, Nick? Like, because I, I, I wasn't sure if it's just because I'm in Sacramento. What, they're making a little bit too much of it? That I, it's almost unprecedented, the amount of hype and attention. The, the, you know, I don't know because I've, I I haven't been in those cities where it's like, you know, you have a player. And, and we were so focused on Keegan because, you know, we're all about Sacramento. And you know, I think that plays a role in it. Um you know, again, when you know before before I came to work here, much like you, it was the Celtics. Like when I I would watch, you know, Tatum in the summer league and Jalen Brown in the summer league, I'd be all you know pumped and jacked about it. Sure, but I, I think it's a combination of the conversation regarding the top five, and then the Ivy versus Keegan thing, and then Keegan playing so well, and and really, you know, if it's historic, it's historic because what Keegan Murray did in the summer league was historic. Only like one or two other cats have done yeah. what he did. Yeah. So I would have to go back to those years where those guys played like Keegan and averaged better than 20 to get the comparison. The fact is, he's played better than anybody's played in the summer league ever. So I, I do think there was some of that. I want to ask the people, though. I, I want your thoughts. 916 339 is the text line. Phone line is 1 800 920 If Keegan Murray finished the season averaging 15 and 6, would you be disappointed? Do you think he's almost been set up for unreasonable expectations given his role on this team or what we expect his role to be? Because, hey, maybe he'll be the number two and Domas will be the three. But for now, I think he's a three. I want your thoughts on that. Again, it's 